check this out. You see this water? It's like a constant stream. It's just like kind of barely raining out here. I mean, it's, it's raining, but not like raining, raining. But it is collecting water and coming into this pipe. And look how high our water level is. It's right there. So that barrel's full. This one, not so much though. Which I think is because we're, you see a gap there. I think a lot of the water's coming around there. But I mean, we are, we are dripping here, just not, not as much. But that's okay, because this barrel, when it gets to the top, will overflow into that barrel. Or I could just go ahead and even it out right now. Let's, let's do that. So this one's here. This one is here. I open this valve. This one, you can see, is going down. This one is going up. Man, they're already starting to get some debris in there though, so. Sinking, sinking. This is taking a while because that's an entire barrel full and this is just one pipe to drain it. So this level was up here where all this dirt was. This one was down here where all this dirt was. Now it's there. So yeah, they equilibrated. I'm now realizing how dirty the inside of those pipes are gonna get, so I probably should have made a way to open that up and clean it. Um, because that was after the first like week. So after the first year, it's probably gonna be hard to see water in there anymore. Well, time will tell. Good news, I got the Humvee back. Um, it's, I took it in the shop to get a line because it was like, like tires making weird noise. They couldn't do the camber. You can see it's kind of tilted in because that's kind of how Humvees are supposed to be. These are made to carry heavy loads. And so once they squat when they're off road and they're full of a heavy load, they kind of straighten out. And there's not really adjustments to make them like really good on a road without a heavy load. But they did fix the toe and I drove it yesterday. It was not squeaking one bit, but it was also rainy. I also filled up all the tires. They were kind of low. That might help too. I need to go to a meeting right now. It's for the warehouse. We have a salesman coming to show us basically like a scanner tool and a whole program system to help us better manage inventory. Um, and me alone, like my merchandise, we don't really need it because we don't, we don't do that much stuff, but we want to grow this business. And I'll tell you more about that later. But I need to get to the meeting because the meeting is at 9 a.m. and it is currently 9.05 a.m. and I'm still just hanging out here in my bar. So, but I think as long as you roll up in style, all is forgiven. And you can't get much more stylish than a Humvee. <laughs> oh man, this thing's awesome. I do miss the backup camera and the Raptor though. That was, you know, nice to have. The reason I'm driving the Humvee right now is because the Raptor's in the shop right now as well. Fits in there getting the tire rotation and balance. I just basically traded trucks yesterday. So all's good. Also, in the rain I found out yesterday, this vehicle, not rainproof, not at all. So, I mean, you can see like, whenever I got on the highway, like it starts putting pressure with the wind and it blows water up over that and starts dripping down here. We have a few leaks, um, you know, back there. When this thing sits in the rain for a while, this top is, I would say, not weatherproof or waterproof, but weather and water and rain resistant. It's not bad, but it's not watertight. All in all though, better than the kit car would have been. What did you think about the meeting? I didn't. Yeah, I, they were talking over my head the whole time. Uh, check this out though, we got the TV working. That's uh, one of Lincoln's friends. Instead of, uh, you know, being back on the couch, he's, he's standing three feet from the 75 inch TV. This is what happens when Meredith babysits your kids. She burns their eyeballs out with a 75 inch TV. But look at, look at this picture. Look at this. Oh man, it looks so good. Here's a little rearranging in here. 
It's looking good, looking good. So basically the meeting today was about a, a scanner system. We'd get a packing slip, it'd have a barcode on it. Our shirts would have barcodes on them, and so we'd scan the packing slip, we'd scan the shirts, and it would say, your order's complete, put it in the bag. And then we put it in the bag, click the scanner, say it's in the bag, and then it knows exactly what happens. It feeds into the system. And then it just, it helps for errors. Sometimes these guys in here will be packing shirts. They'll see the packing slip. It'll say they need a large Vet Ranch cat shirt. And they go over here and they grab a large Vet Ranch dog shirt. They put it in the bag. They're not paying attention. Put it in the bag, ship it off. And then we get an email saying, hey, you gave me a cat shirt when I wanted a dog shirt or whatever. And so we have to fix it. But this way, you have a packing slip. You have a cat shirt when you need a dog shirt. You scan the packing slip. It says, all right, we need a dog shirt. You scan the cat shirt. It says, nope. That's the wrong one. And so you go, oh, I have an error. And you go and you fix it right there. You don't have to deal with all the refund and return and all that stuff. Much better, much more efficient and should make our job a lot easier here. Ugh. That's it. And uh, you wanna go home with me? Uh, that came out weird. I just meant like go to, go to my house, not like in like a, unless you're into it. Just stop by the uh, insurance office um, because I, Meredith and I went and talked about life insurance not too long ago. I think she's planning to kill me. Um, but I had to get a physical, you have to submit blood. And um, anyway, I just got my results back. I, so they have, they have three levels. They have, I guess they probably have more than that, but they start you at standard and then they have preferred health. Um, and then they have super preferred. I'm super preferred health <laughs> because I'm so healthy. So that was, that's a good, you know, thing just walked in. Some lady told me that I'm super preferred healthy. I was like, I know, isn't it obvious? <laughs> now I get to go with Mayor. Uh, we're Christmas shopping. Uh, we do a- It's like the greatest time mm -hmm. of the year. Christmas shopping? Matt has to go shopping. <laughs> yeah, I actually hate shopping. So even Christmas shopping doesn't sound fun to me. Um, we do a, a gift exchange with Mayor's and my family, but for Mayor's family, I drew Meredith's mother. Um, uh, <laughs> what? I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was like, Mayor, I don't know what to get for your mom. And so Mayor is coming to pick out something for her mom so we can say it's from me. <laughs> but she's making me come. I was like, can you just do it? No. I got guns to shoot and things. Mare's mom doesn't watch the vlog, so I can show you guys what we get her, but I know she's a teacher, and some of her students I know watch the vlog, so if you are one of Meredith's mom's students, don't tell her what we get for Christmas. Uh, Meredith thinks she might want like a gym bag, so we're we're checking out. What do you think? Pockets? That was pretty good. I am being very helpful here. Meredith gives me that face a lot. Mare and I just got her mom a beautiful bag to go to the gym. And the best part about it is Mare and I went shopping together and we're both still happy. We're in good moods and like, usually I hate shopping, but this was good. We only got one, we still have one thing. another hour before we have to get the kids. So are we gonna do more Christmas shopping? I'm still smiling right now, but in another hour, it probably won't be that way, just FYI. So you're gonna make me do all the Christmas shopping for the kids? Uh, yes. I mean, that's, I'll order some stuff on me. Amazon. Quick update on the game camera. Um, nothing. I, it took zero videos or pictures, which I know I walked in front of this a couple times. I know Dozer walked in front of this a couple times. I know my kids were in front of it a bunch, so. I think I have a setting wrong on it. Um, so nothing so far. We'll keep you posted. Guys, kit car, kit car. Guys, um, you can see I don't have the engine cover on the back of it right now, it's, it's right here. And it's because I needed to do some things under the engine cover and the engine cover is super hard to get on and off. Like it takes forever. And basically it's because it's, it's huge. This is only half of it, but this, you can see there's like a little dirt that has to go under that bar, that black bar right there. And so it's really hard to like contortion it all in to fit in between all these things. So I'm gonna, I just haven't been driving with it on because I, I took it off, it took forever. And you can see I like scratched it up too because you have to like really put a lot of pressure on it. I think I'm just gonna cut it right along here. It, it looks nicer when it comes further down and kind of cover some of this stuff. 
but it is just not worth it. I've never cut fiberglass in my life, never ever, but do one thing today that makes tomorrow better than yesterday. And what'll be better tomorrow is if I can actually put this engine cover back on. So that's what I'm doing today. You guys who actually know how to cut fiberglass are probably gonna cringe at my method, but I figured a cutoff wheel on this grinder would work. So now you can see it fits down in there really easily because you don't have all that extra. Plus, you know, it came out another couple inches this way and then it went down a couple inches right there, which made it super hard. The other one though was way harder anyway, so I'm gonna go cut the other one to match this one and I think it'll be way easier. All right, I think if, yeah, that goes there. This goes here. Wow, one hand. I don't look too bad at all, that's good. So before, that would have taken me about 20 minutes of like moving it really slow and like bending the fiberglass to go around things. Definitely not a one-handed three second procedure. Much better. All right, I'm gonna hook it in. This, this is great. <laughs> broke it. That's your clothes. You have to wear those. Done. Got it all hooked on. Got the little rubber edge back on there. I think this thing looks a lot better with the back on there. It just looks more finished, but it was just such a pain. Not anymore. Fixed it. The rest of my life will be better because of the work I just did. So the plan with the merchandise warehouse is we don't want to just do my stuff. We would like to do lots of creators merchandise and like there are companies already that do that we i'm fully aware but they pay the creators like very much like i don't feel like they pay what we deserve so what i would like to create is a place that gives the creators more um and i'll explain more about that later but that's been my goal with the warehouse from the get-go we started with just me because we wanted to make sure everything works and it's still going to be me for probably another month or two just me um because we want to get everything fixed and streamlined and get out all the errors before we bring someone on and say, hey, come over here, we'll sell your merchandise. And then we totally mess it all up and they never come back. We want to make this really easy for creators, YouTubers, Instagrammers, anybody. But also we want to just do it better than anyone does it. Like there's companies like Teespring who I've used before who do a really good job, but I want to be better. And I think as a YouTuber, I know what other YouTubers want and I think I can make it better than Teespring does it. And all those companies, and Teespring's like a huge company, so like, I'm not saying we're ever gonna be as big as them, but why not? Why couldn't I do it? I feel like I could do it. So this is Matt Carricker telling you that he's gonna turn our little warehouse into something amazing, and we're gonna revolutionize the merch game for all the other YouTubers, make everything better. That's my plan. It may not happen like in the next couple months, it might take a lot of months, a lot of maybe, maybe a lot of years, but I think we can do it. I have big plans, big goals. Daddy, I want you to put these on. On me? Yeah. Just for safety? Yeah. It's hard so to... you don't shoot your eye. That is a good idea. Michael Jordan said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So we're taking the shot. And someone else said that shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you land among the stars. It means that set your goals super high. If you hit those goals, it's amazing. If you don't, you're way better off than if you would not have been shooting for those goals in the first place. Go, go, go. Whoa, you're lifting me. You're lifting me. Machines are amazing that this, this little like 35 pound boy can lift this 200 pound boy. Just with a little old machine. So that's all we got for you. Lincoln's lifting me off the ground. Thanks for watching Off the Ranch. 
set some goals. Set goals super high. I was actually listening to a podcast the other day, Andy Frisella, and he was saying, make your goals so high that you are embarrassed to tell your friends about them. When you tell your friends, I want to be a YouTuber with a million subscribers, they laugh at you. Set your goals so high that your friends laugh at you and it's embarrassing to tell them. That's how you know you're setting good goals. If you set a goal like, yeah, I want to get 100 subscribers on YouTube. No one cares. That's People are like, oh, okay, my mom has 100 subscribers on YouTube. But if you say you want a million and your friends laugh at you, that's the kind of goal you need to go for. And it doesn't have to be YouTube. It can be anything. Say that you want to be a CEO of a company. Your friends all laugh at you and go, no, no, no. You're going to make 12 bucks an hour the rest of your life. No, you want to be a CEO. Shoot for that CEO goal. Maybe if you don't make it, you are the top manager in that company. You're making $100,000 a year. Your friends can keep laughing. You didn't make CEO, but you're doing a lot better than you were doing. Thanks for watching Off The Ranch. I love you. I'm not talking about killing people. You say I want to murder you. Oh! <laughs>